Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Heidi. I make Japan-related travel and lifestyle content. I came to Japan in 2019 to study at the Japanese language school. And since then, I've passed the JLPT, or Japanese language proficiency test, levels N4 to N2. My stay at Japanese language school helped me pass the N2 in less than two years, but that doesn't mean I didn't struggle with learning the language. In fact, I failed the JLPT N3 on my first try. In this video, I'll discuss some mistakes I made that hindered my progress as a Japanese language learner and some tools I used to overcome them. So without further ado, let's get on to the video. So mistake number one, not understanding my learning style. When I first began learning Japanese, I made the mistake of forcing myself to use textbooks that didn't match my learning style. And because of that, I felt that it hindered me from learning Japanese effectively. I realized that before choosing a main material or a series of textbooks to follow, you need to understand the approach and whether or not it matches your learning style. For example, as a beginner, I first used Mino no Nihongo and I didn't like it at all. I felt that it didn't give me enough support as a beginner. So when I realized that, I quickly switched over to the Genki series, which some might say uses too much English, but it's easier for me to understand, so there's no shame in that. I think the more you understand how you learn, the more efficient and easier it becomes for you to choose the right material that's suitable for you. Later on, for the more intermediate levels, it was so much easier for me to choose a selection and combination of textbooks that worked well for me. For vocabulary and kanji, I really like using the Nihongo Somatome series. And as for grammar, I find that the Shinkansen Master series explains grammar points and their nuances much better. Mistake number two, not practicing speaking in Japanese. It's not uncommon for beginner language learners to be shy when they try to speak in their target language, but pushing past that is important because speaking shows everything that you've learned so far and it's a great way to test your fluency. I used to get so caught up in perfecting my intonation, my vocabulary choice, and grammar that I deprived myself of so many chances to practice. So here are a few things that I can suggest that would help you improve your speaking skills. First, try shadowing. Shadowing is basically parroting words, reactions, and sentences that you hear. The one I use in Japanese language school is called Shadowing, Let's Speak in Japanese. And I realized that by using this book with time, you'll be able to pick up on the correct enunciation, intonation, that will help your Japanese sound more natural. Second, don't make not living in Japan as an excuse for not speaking in Japanese. I would look for Japanese clubs online or meetup events where you can meet other language learners and try to record yourself talking about your day or your plans for the upcoming week in Japanese instead of writing it in a journal. Third, if you live in Japan, it's best to try to make friends with native Japanese speakers. I know how tempting it can be to just put yourself in a bubble and only speak with people that come from your home country, but you have to see Japanese as part of your life and not just a skill or a subject that you're trying to master. Mistake number three, not reviewing kanji outside of the JLPT. Even if you make hundreds of flashcards but you don't review them every once in a while, don't expect to remember new kanji and vocabulary. More than that, if you only limit yourself to the vocabulary and characters that appear on the JLPT, then it hinders your ability to express yourself. It's important to push beyond what you already know and to stay consistent. If you're looking for ways to stay consistent, one option is to use an app that reminds you when to review. For the third year in a row, I'd like to introduce an app that's been helping me stay consistent and learn new words outside of the JLPT. Mochi Kanji Learn Japanese, formerly Mochi Mochi, is a trusted language learning app that's a great way to supplement your current Japanese language knowledge. Upon opening the app, it asks about your current level and motivations for learning Japanese, and then it suggests a course that you can take to achieve that level. If you like structured learning, then this is a great additional resource to help you achieve your language learning goals. Learn over 8,000 words and kanji that cover all JLPT levels as well as other industries like IT and nursing. Each course is further broken down into small topics and each topic includes 10 words or characters making it easier to memorize. To keep you motivated, there's even a new feature called Mochi Garden that plants digital trees for you to take care of as you achieve each milestone. Here are a few reasons why this app stands out. First, there's a feature called Golden 
golden time. Golden time combines the methods of spaced repetition as well as a specialized algorithm that analyzes your personal learning history. It reminds you to review at the right What's time, which buddy? optimizes your ability to learn new words more effectively and permanently. With this new feature, you can memorize 1,000 kanji and vocabulary in just one month. Next, Mochi Kanji also divides the words and characters that you've learned into five levels of memorization. From level one, or words that you've just learned, to level five, words that you've come to memorize, you can sort through all of it in your personalized digital notebook. It's also another good way to keep track of your progress. Third, the app uses a mix of games to help you learn new words so it never feels tedious. For every flashcard, there's matching audio, definition, photos, and sample sentences. Beyond just testing your vocabulary or kanji recognition, the quizzes inside the lesson also test your reading, writing, and listening skills for a more well-rounded experience. Besides, when your golden time is up, you'll get review lessons where you can comprehensively revise all the words that you've learned through reading, writing, and listening again. Here are a few newly added features to the app. First, we have Mochi Kanji's conversation tab where you can interact and practice Japanese with the app's characters Mochi and Michi. Next, the Write tab lets you practice JLPT N5 to N2 kanji characters by teaching you the correct stroke order step by step. Next, the Search tab acts as a dictionary that has upwards of 10,000 words to help you find what you're looking for. The results come with a definition, sample sentence, and even matching audio. You can also save the words that you've just searched into your digital notebook for reviewing later. Lastly, there are also in-app events that tie up with the Mochi Kanji Learn Japanese Facebook group. Here, you can join in on the events and even make new friends. If you're interested in downloading the app, Search Mochi Kanji Learn Japanese on the Apple Store, Google Play Store, or on the website. Thank you again, Mochi Kanji, for partnering with me for the third time in a row. I have nothing but good experiences with this app. That's why I can keep recommending this app for you guys to try. So next, let's move on to my fourth mistake, which is more centered around living in Japan. And this is thinking that immersion would automatically improve my Japanese language skills. You might think that moving to Japan will automatically improve your Japanese skills, but as I mentioned previously, that is not always the case. There are some foreigners who live in Japan that never improve their language skills, their Japanese language skills, because it's very easy to live in an English-speaking bubble here. Know that Japanese can be learned from anywhere as long as you make a conscious effort every day and you track your progress. It doesn't matter where you are as long as you know your goals, be it to pass N1 or watch anime without subtitles, as long as you have a language learning goal, then it becomes easier for you to plot out your next step. Mistake number five, only using textbooks and informational videos. Don't only use Japanese textbooks and informational videos to learn the language. You have to find ways to integrate the language into your daily life, such as through your hobbies or interests. It might seem like an obvious mistake for most, but it actually took me a while to realize. Now that I live in Tokyo and have started to run, I've made so many friends by joining a local run club, and it's a great way for me to practice my Japanese conversational skills while also getting a workout in. Watching slice of life anime like Crayon Shinchan or specific sports related anime like Haikyuu or Run with the Wind can also teach you specific terms used in the sport. I've even heard of other Japanese language learners who translate their favorite English songs into Japanese and vice versa. For me, every time I go to karaoke, I try to sing at least one Japanese song because it helps me practice my reading comprehension as well as my kanji skills. Another way I practice Japanese beyond the classroom is by watching Japanese movies without English subtitles. I find that it's a great way to measure my comprehension and at first it was quite frustrating because I didn't really understand a lot, but as I've progressed with my language learning journey, I've come to realize that I can actually understand full-on movies now. And the only way I'm able to understand it is because I've put in the work and I've stayed consistent. And for me, there's no better feeling than that. One of the only ways you'll be able to sound more natural is to put yourself in situations where real life Japanese is spoken and not textbook Japanese. There's a totally different set of slang and phrases that await you just beyond the classroom and just behind that textbook. So thank you again so much for watching this video and thank you to Mochi Kanji for partnering with me for the third time. And if you guys have any other questions or tips that you'd like to leave about Japanese language learning or your mistakes that you've made, please comment them down below and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!